I've created a vacuum cleaner uh, out of a old piece of uh, parts of a Dyson. Here we got the main canister, vacuum that goes normally below the canister, and then I modified the intake where I glued it, cut this off of the back frame of the vacuum cleaner, super glued it here, cut, bent and epoxied it to the bottom, and also the same for an adapter that's normally used as a extension hose from a vacuum. And then this piece is also from the vacuum. Uh, trimmed it down so it fit inside here. Used a cap from a piece of uh, PVC which is glued at the bottom and then attached here. The bottom I have a piece of wood uh, that I dremeled out and attached to a snap-on lid of a for a five gallon bucket uh, Use a, a snap-on type versus the other type because the others are really hard to get off the bottom of the vacuum has a Sorry all the motion piece of rubber that's for silencing reducing vibration that's in the vacuum reuse that for mounting purposes and then use a screw to go straight through the rubber into the motor give it a little extra grip make sure that the motor doesn't go anywhere and then this tube is just from a regular shop vac And this piece is normally the part that goes into the shop vac. That piece instead is going to go into my other equipment, such as my saw, and will plug right into the back. But using uh, the extension piece from the Dyson, I can also just stick that in, and you've got a extra extension hole. Now, the biggest problem I had here is the Dyson creates such a vacuum that I had originally used a five-gallon drum. This thing warped. I created some extra framing, but then it sucked in. As you can see here, it is uh, warped to such an extent that it, it's not going to hold up. Then I also used a regular five gallon bucket from Walmart. This is what happens to it. You put so much vacuum on a normal five gallon bucket, it's going to implode. That's about as much stuff as I got until it imploded on me. So, using two five gallon buckets, I used, put one inside the other, rough them with some sandpaper, and then use some heavy duty Loctite in between the two. The two together create enough reinforcement that this thing will not implode. I've got a pile of sawdust here. I'm just sit that right on top. You really don't have to worry about clipping it down because the vacuum is going to do it for you. Oh, and also, before I go any further, I don't just have this screwed down onto a piece of wood, but I also have another one below. So it screws from one side to the other, creating a little sandwich, and then I used regular silicone sealant around the bottom, give a good seal. And then also on the bottom of the Dyson, this needs to be capped. They have a special plate on the bottom that caps this. Uh, looks, looks like this piece here. Take that off, cut a circle that fits inside of here and put some silicone sealant on that as well. What's gonna happen is your junk is going to travel through here, up around, it's going to spin, and drop down. Normally in a Dyson, you've, you've got uh, a fill line, max fill line. If you go above here, it's going to get sucked in, you're going to have a bad day. But I've made this basically infinite low because I'm putting the bucket underneath. So now to demonstrate... Sit this on top, go around,
And as you can see, uh, in that sawdust, I didn't only just have uh, sawdust, but all the screws that came out of the dice in and a bearing and some other stuff. It just sucks it right up. Uh, it's really, really strong. And uh, if you've got a Dyson that's got a section of it that's broken, but the main vacuum still works, I uh, recommend building something like this. Only cost uh, maybe $20 in parts between plywood, screws, two buckets, the lid. Um, just take the old pieces of Dyson and rip it apart and use this. I uh, hope this was... Uh, Helpful for anybody trying to make a Cyclone vacuum cleaner out of an old Dyson.